Hey guys, this is Tom, aka Dark Controller, bringing you the first of hopefully many um, Linux tutorial videos. Um, this one, we're going to be just kind of introduced to Linux, get started on it. Uh, we're going to be using uh, VirtualBox, which is a uh, program that allows you to s install operating systems and programs uh, in a virtual machine setting. Uh, so no, first off, we're going to download that, and get, to get that, <clears throat> we're going to be going to virtualbox.org. You simply just click on the big download button, pretty straightforward. Uh, underneath the packages, we want to pick the one that for the OS that we're using for, uh, on the host machine. Uh, in this case, we are using Windows 7, so we're going to download the one for Windows. If you're using Mac OS, we've got one here for that also. And they've got some for some Linux hosts as well. I have not tried those yet. Maybe we'll do that in the future. But for now, we're going to be doing this one. So you just click on that. As you can see, it downloads. Just cancel that because I've actually already downloaded and installed it on my PC. Um, after that, we're going to want to download an ISO of the Linux distribution. Uh, now, you can download uh, Ubuntu, Debian, there's several, there's quite a few different um, different versions or different distributions of Linux. Um, we're going to be using CentOS. I've got more uh, experience with that than any others. Maybe we'll dive into some of the other ones uh, in the future, but for now, we're going to be going with CentOS. Um, now I'm already on the CentOS download, which is just centos.org slash download. <clears throat> now here we're, we've got three different options. We've got a DVD ISO, an everything ISO, and minimal ISO. Um, I believe the DVD and everything both have a, both come with graphical user interfaces. Um, the DVD is a little bit smaller than everything. I couldn't tell you exactly what all is different about them. But uh, anyways, the minimal one uh, it doesn't have any graphical interfaces and just is a really stripped down version of uh, CentOS. We can install pretty much anything we want, uh, you know, in the near future after we get it installed. Yeah, this is just a command prompt, kind of similar to DOS, um, but we're going to be going with that one. So you just click on that. It's going to bring you to a list of mirrors and you just choose whichever one you want. Sure, so yeah, so the minimal one is about 600 megabytes. I've already got it, so we're going to continue onward. Oops. Let's see, so after you install, after you install VirtualBox, which is pretty straightforward, uh, you're going to come up with this. I've got a couple virtual machines over here that are already installed. We're going to create a new one. And we'll call this one TestBox, for whatever reason. Uh, type, it's going to be Linux, and... Um, the version, it's got a few different versions listed. It's got Debian, Fedora, Gen 2, so on and so forth, Ubuntu. Um, this one, this particular CentOS is not listed in here. However, we're just going to go with the Linux 2.6 slash 3x, 4x, 64-bit. We want to do 64-bit. If you've got a 32-bit machine, obviously you're going to go with that. Um, mine's 64, obviously, so we're going to go with that. Um, now on the next one, it asks you how much memory size you want. Uh, recommended memory size is 256 for this, but my machine's got a lot to spare, so we're going to go with, uh, let's see, 4048. Or was it 4096? That's what it is. That's 4 gigs. So we're going to go with that. Let's see. Next on to the hard disk, we want to create a virtual hard disk now. Uh, it's going to be just a virtual box disk image. I don't need to change any of the settings. Dynamically allocated is fine. Um, let's see. And they recommend it of 8 gig. You can give it more. You can give it a little bit less. Um, I tend to go with whatever they recommend at least because when you start uh, installing different stuff, you might come into a new um, issue where it's just not quite enough. And I'm not really sh sure if you can. I'm sure there's probably a way I'm not aware of it to increase the size. It's probably something super simple. I've just never had to do it. But anyway, so we're just going to leave it at 8 gigs. That's plenty enough for what we're doing. And for minimal uh, installation, it'll be just fine. So once you create it, uh, it's pretty much good to go. We're going to change a few things in the settings. First is network. We're going to go here and say bridged adapter. That makes it a little bit more easy uh, for when you are doing some of the network stuff within uh, Linux. Um, 
Storage. Click OK. And nope, not network. My bad. Storage. That's what I wanted. You're going to click on the little disk tray, which is your virtual disk tray. All right. So I'm going to click on that. Go over here and load a disk, or ISO in this case. Um, you see this one shows up already. Actually, this one might be the DVD, not minimal, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, if it's not there, you just click it, and it'll open up a box. We've already got it, so we're just going to go with that. Click OK, and we just start the machine. Hit Enter. So we just pick our language here. Obviously, we're speaking English, so we'll continue. Let's see. Minimal install is there, so we click on that to select the hard drive. We want that one. Oops, there we go. Just checked it done. Alright, so then we go to begin installation. And now while it's installing. What we'll do is set a password for root, and for you, for those of you who aren't aware, root is essentially the administrator for your Linux system. Um, it's much like administrator is in Windows, except for it's a little bit more powerful than that. Um, so this is a really bad practice, but for the tutorial, we're just going to use password for our password and it even says hey this is weak don't do it so you click done and then it says you provided it so on and so forth it's really weak and we're just going to done again to do it uh, now we could also if we wanted to create users but we're going to do that uh, after it's installed on the command line to show you how to do that and how to set passwords for that all right guys so we've got it installed uh, all we have to do is click a reboot button and it Reset and took us to here. So right now we are at our login. We have to log in obviously. So we're gonna log in as root since it's the only user on our machine. Uh, password is password. So you'll notice right, oh, I can't see, I don't have a cursor. Uh, you'll notice that we are root at localhost, which is this machine. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a user. So we just do add user space name of the user in this case uh, we'll just say Tom T hit enter and it's done there is a user named Tom T next thing we want to do is we want to give Tom T a password so we're gonna do P A S S W D for password and the name of the user we want to change password for this one's gonna to be Tom T but as it prompts us for a password we're just gonna use password because that's easy and of course it tells us that it's not a good password, it's not safe. But we're gonna use it anyway, so you just hit, type it again and hit enter. Now from here, we can uh, change to that user. Um, now when you're root, you can change to anybody. So we can go su tom t, and it will not prompt me for a password. As you can see, it changed, I can't see the cursor, but you guys, you can see it, it changed from root to tom t at localhost. Now if we go back to root, which we can do um, because I am a regular user going to an elevated user such as root um, it does prompt me for a password 
which isn't a problem. We just enter password, and we're back as root. All right. So there's that. That's how you add. Clear to the screen. We'll type clear. Um, now with this particular uh, distribution of Linux, um, it doesn't. The network doesn't start up right away. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change directory, which is cd, and we're going to go to the Etsy directory which contains a lot of the configurations for the different programs running on the machine so on and so forth so we change and you can see that it's root at localhost space etsy that's the directory we're in and if you are ever unsure of what directory you're in you can type pwd for print working directory and you can see that we're in the slash etsy folder so from here we can list out what we want type ls that's going to list everything that's in the directory and as you can see there is a fair amount of stuff in here um, now on this particular uh, distribution we want to go to the sysconfig file or folder rather cd sysconfig so we are now in this etsy slash etsy slash sysconfig uh, we'll do ls once more and we want to go into the network scripts. So we want to go to CD network scripts. And if you hit LS again, it brings this up. Um, <clears throat> now, in this particular, uh, in CentOS, um, the settings for the network are in the ifcfg enp0s3 file. Um, on a lot of other distributions it's the instead of saying ENP 0 S3 it's called ETH 0 or it might be another form of that like ETH 1 or depending on how many NICs you have in your um, machine um, so we're gonna go DI which is a program will maybe I'll do a video specifically on that because it is it's a pretty useful tool and does take some explaining. So we're going to VI, IFCFG, uh, okay. So here we got all the, all the settings for our network interface card or NIC. Um, you can see right here this last one on boot, no. Um, we want to change that, oops, equals yes. Uh, so that means the uh, Nick will fire up when the PC is booted. So we're going to do that, get out of there, clear. Uh, the other thing you can do too, um, if you don't want it on, you can manually um, start up the NIC and we can do that with uh, IF up space and the network, uh, the, the device name, which is in our case is ENP0S3. So it should be up, and in order to test this, we can ping Google. And you can see we are getting a response, so it is indeed working now, so we do have internet connection. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is install our graphical user interface. Now there's a couple different ones that are fairly commonly used. There's uh, GNOME and um, KDE. There's a couple other ones too. Um, those are those are the two that I have the most experience with. I happen to prefer KDE. It's a little uh, I don't know, a little bit less finicky, I guess. Uh, maybe it was just the, the particular one I I had installed, but I like KDE. It's pretty simple, and uh, so we're gonna go with that. First thing we want to do is uh, let's see yum group install x space windows. Oh, sorry, Windows system.
without fonts, you will get some issues with KDE, like basically, it must be a bunch of blocks when it displays font. Okay, and so installing of the fonts is complete. Now next we actually do the yum install kde dash de uh, workspace workspace the desktop it's, desk yeah, it's workspace hit that yes yes to everything again okay so um now that uh, the kde workspace has been installed we are going to start it up um i cleared the screen so it, that's why it looks like this so to start it we just simply uh, type start x and as you can see it brings up the graphic user interface i have a mouse and it looks pretty um it is uh worthwhile to note that if you restart the machine it will not start in the GUI it will just be a command line and you just type start X again um, in the future I'll show you how to change it so that it always starts in the GUI instead of the command prompt um, you have to look into that a little bit it's a little different to change it on CentOS 7 than it was on the previous ones and the previous ones you would uh, uh, edit one of the um, init files in this one it's a little bit more complicated than that or at least it was from what I understand or reading anyways um, so we'll do that in a future video after I do some reading on it um, but for right now yeah we got it uh, there's your CentOS 7 and KDE desktop now we can go ahead and use whatever we want um, we are going to be using a lot of the console which basically is just the command line just whatever the QT name they call it so we'll just add to the desktop because we're using a bunch. Click on it. And there's our command line. From here we can do whatever we'd like. PWD for print working directory. We're in the root directory. That is essentially what I did there. Uh, these files are what is just on the hard drive. Essentially it's looking at if you're to, to uh, equate it to Windows it is essentially you're looking in the C directory which is just the hard drive so this is just the hard drive that is in Linux referenced by a single forward slash that means at the very root so to speak or that's what it's called of the file system or just the hard drive in general but anyways we'll get into more of that later um, this video all I wanted to do was install Linux, show you how to within a virtual machine setting. If you were doing this on a regular computer, it would be pretty much the same thing, uh, except for you wouldn't be installing VirtualBox, obviously. But, so that's that. Um, if you like the uh, video, be sure to hit the like button. Uh, any questions, comments, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, please stay tuned for more videos. Thanks.